Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the last science show. Your favorite science show, I hope. We are still celebrating Black History Month, and as we celebrate, we highlight the lives and legacies of black scientists. Let's shine the spotlight on Annie Easley. Annie Jean Easley was an American computer scientist, mathematician, and rocket scientist. She worked for the Lewis Research Center of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and its predecessor, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Annie Easley had never heard of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, also known as NACA, when she read an article about twin sisters who were human computers at the Aircraft Engine Research Laboratory in Cleveland, Ohio. The lab, the predecessor of the NASA Glenn Research Center, was in need of people with strong math skills, and she was in need of a job after recently relocating from Birmingham, Alabama. Two weeks after reading the article, Easley began a career that would span 34 years. She would contribute to numerous programs as a computer scientist, inspire many through her enthusiastic participation in outreach programs, break down barriers for women, and people of color in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And she won the admiration and respect of her coworkers. In 1955, Easley began her career as a human computer, doing computations for researchers. This involved analyzing problems and doing calculations by hand. Her earliest work involved running simulations for the newly planned Plum Brook Reactor Facility. When hired, she was one of only four African American employees at the lab. In a 2001 interview, she said that she had never set out to be a pioneer. She said, I just have my own attitude. I'm out here to get the job done, and I knew I had the ability to do it. And that's where my focus was." End quote. Even in the face of discrimination, she persevered. My head is not in the sand, but my thing is, if I can't work with you, I will work around you. I was not about to be so discouraged that I'd walk away. That may be a solution for some people, but it's not mine." End quote. When human computers were replaced by machines, Easley evolved along with the technology. She became an adept computer programmer using languages like the Formula Translating System, known as Fortran, and the Simple Object Access Protocol, SOAP, to support a number of NASA's programs. She developed and implemented code used in researching energy conservation systems analyzing alternative power technology, including the better technology that was used for early hybrid vehicles, as well as for the Centaur upper stage rocket. In the 1970s, Easley returned to school to earn her degree in mathematics from Cleveland State, doing much of her coursework while also working full time. A firm believer in education and in her mother's advice, you can be anything you wanna be, but you have to work at it. Easley was very dedicated in her outreach efforts at NASA. She not only participated in school tutoring programs, but was a very active participant in the Speaker's Bureau, telling students about NASA's work and inspiring especially female and minority students to consider STEM careers. Later in her career, she took on the additional role of Equal Employment Opportunity, EEO counselor. In this role, she helped supervisors address issues of gender, race, and age in discrimination complaints at the lowest level and in the most cooperative way possible. Less formally, she helped pave the way for women's rights at the center when she and her room supervisor made a pact to wear pants suits the following day. Again, from her 2001 interview, it did cause quite a stir, but there was one woman who said, I was just waiting for the first one to wear pants. You know, we took the emphasis off of what you're wearing. It's more like what you're actually producing." End quote. A Lewis News article quoted one of Easley's co-workers as saying, she loves life and encourages others to do the same. In addition to her technical and outreach activities, Easley was a champion of employee morale. She was a founding member of the Ski Club and was very active in the annual Children's Christmas Play. 
Center Athletics, and the Business and Professional Women's Association. Easley would humbly state that she never set out to be a role model or trailblazer. Many who knew her would say that it was not just the work that she did that made a difference, it was her energy and positive attitude that had a tremendous impact on the center. In the 35-page transcript of her 2001 NASA oral history interview, Easley consistently emphasizes the importance of teamwork and expresses appreciation and admiration for those she worked with. There are many illustrations throughout her career of her demonstration and discipline, kindness, and generosity. Easley retired in 1989, but she remained an active participant in the Speakers Bureau and the Business and Professional Women's Association. Annie Easley passed away on June 25, 2011. Her legacy continues to inspire countless students to make an impact in the STEM field. But not just STEM students, she inspires me to just keep on pushing despite difficulty and delay in achieving success. Thank you, Ms. Easley. Thank you for watching this episode of The Last Science Show. Continue to like, subscribe, comment, and share for more. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good science. The first black scientist we are going to honor is George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was an African-American scientist and educator. Carver is famous for many inventions, including a number of uses for the peanut. George Washington Carver was born enslaved and went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time, as well as a teacher of the Tuskegee Institute. Carver devised over 100 products using one major crop, the peanut including dyes, plastics, and gasoline. Carver was most likely born in 1864, enslaved in Diamond, Missouri, during the Civil War years. Like many children of the enslaved, uh, the exact year and date of his birth are unknown. Carver was one of many children born to Mary and Giles, an enslaved couple owned by Moses Carver. A week after his birth, Carver was kidnapped along with his sister and mother from the Carver farm by raiders from the neighboring state of Arkansas. The three were later sold in Kentucky. Among them, only the infant Carver was located by an agent of Moses Carver and returned to Missouri. The conclusion of the Civil War in 1865 brought the end of slavery in Missouri. Moses and his wife Susan decided to keep Carver and his brother James at their house after that time. 